Hi, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and today we're going to talk about Selenium 3.11.0 breaking changes which is happening right now in Selenium repository and the new release of Selenium happened just 9 hours before the video is being recorded. Page object models page factory class is currently marked as obsolete in Selenium 3.11 and what does that mean is sooner or later in Selenium 3.12 or 3.13 we are gonna see that the page factory class itself will be removed from selenium.support library. Selenium 3.6.0 is missing one of the most important class page factory used for page object models and page navigation for .NET Core. So this was one of the information which I was sharing a couple of months before and we were expecting this particular page factory class is going to be appeared in the .NET Core library. But as you can see in the contrast that the issue which was reported in the GitHub for .NET Core 2.0 that the Selenium 3.6 is missing this page factory class is obviously throwing us these kinds of error is now happening directly in C Sharp's .NET 4.7 frameworks as well. Something like this. You can see that 3.11 which is released just nine hours before has this message that the page factory is obsolete and the page factory implementation in .NET binding is deprecated and will be removed in the future release. So this portion of the code has been merged into a .NET Selenium Extras repository on GitHub. So it seems like they have completely moved the page factory class to another repository isolating it from the current working repository of Selenium. So the page factory implementation in the .NET binding is deprecated and will be removed in the future release. That's one of the most important information that we need to understand here. And as you can see here with the change log, it says that the marked .NET page factory obsolete and this particular page factory is deeply flawed. It was working pretty fine before and there is some flaw internally and they just want to remove this completely without having to use that. And what is this particular change and why is this change going to affect our current code? So using page factory they are saying that there is no benefit or other methods of page object creation in .NET. This is true for the code verbosity as well which is often the reason cited for wanting to use page factory in .NET. So it seems like the page factory that we have been using all these days with all this fancy attribute had some real problem which was not so verbose whereas without using page factory with using the dotnet's own object creation is even more verbose to tell us what exact exception is happening and that's the reason that sometimes when we try to debug in the visual studio c sharp we always get that cannot able to debug due to source not found exception. So the existing code that we were writing so far in page object model was looking something like this. We had a login page or something like that and we have the page factory dot init elements. This class, the page factory class is going to be deprecated. If it is deprecated, then all these attributes like find by and how dot how dot name or xpath or CSS is also going to be deprecated because there is no way that these objects attribute can be initialized without having to have the init elements method. So what is the change going to happen? It's going to be something like this. So we are going to use the C sharp 6.0 and 7.0 features. This is called as expression property expressions or expression bodied members. So these are the way that you can use to create the properties and you can use the driver object and find element by name or xpath or css and something like that directly to initialize the object something like this. So you can see that the number of lines of code that you write for creating a text username is like two lines whereas it is now reduced into just one line that is pretty straightforward. We don't really have to write a lot of code there. So it's kind of very very straightforward right now and you can see that the benefit that we get from our existing page object model compared to the current C sharp 6.0 and 7.0 feature is really really good and so the deprecation is really happening for one of the good reason as well. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that I'm gonna flip to Visual Studio. 
All right, so this is the same code which we have been working so long in one of our repository in GitHub. So you can go to the github.com slash execute automation and go to repository. We have some of the repositories and one of the repositories that I'm working today is actually the Selenium parallel sample. So you can take this particular code and start using it for understanding how things are actually working. So I'm just going to use this particular code and this particular code is currently available over here. So this is the Selenium parallel test code. So I'm just going to modify the code and I will demonstrate how to work with this particular uh, project to work with the new changes of the page object models. So as I said before, you can see that the page object models are initialized using this particular uh, code. So basically there is a login page of page factor identity elements and these are uh, the different ways of creating the properties for identifying the elements and then this is the method that you write to perform the operation. So again these are some of the code that we have already discussed and if you have not watched please go ahead and watch there and there is an advanced course where we have discussed about this a lot and this changes is going to be applicable for our advanced course as well. So there is an advanced course in Udemy called Advanced Framework Development with Selenium C Sharp and this particular changes is going to be applicable for that course as well and we are going to modify all the existing code of the advanced course into the new proposed change by the Selenium team. So as that said I'm just going to build this particular solution and you can see that there will be a login method this one the login as user as administrator so I'm just going to run this particular test and I'm see what's going to happen there. So basically you should open the browser and then it should log me in to that particular application and the test should get passed. There we go. That's cool. And this is with the existing page object models concept here. And you can see that we are currently using the latest version of Selenium, at least not very latest. It is the just before the latest version which is 3.10 version of selenium we can see i'm currently using 3.10 for selenium web driver and selenium support and now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go all the way and i'm going to upgrade the latest stable version of 3.11 and as i said if we update to this particular version automatically it is going to update the support package as well so let me do that so once I update this, now you will see all the problems going to happen there. So now if I go back to my login page.cs file, do you see there is a screwly line come in? So if I just hover all the way here, you can see this is the same message which I shared in the slide there that the page factory is obsolete and the page factory implementation in .NET binding is deprecated and will be removed in the future release. So you can see that this is going to happen. This is going to be completely removed in future release. So there is no point in actually having this particular code. Sooner or later, your team is going to be removing or modifying the existing code to adapt the new changes. And we are way ahead to forecast that particular problem. And we need that code change to happen right away, right now, so that there is no last minute surprises in our existing code. So what I'm going to do is this, how to handle the situation. I'm just going to go all the way here. And as I said, we do really have to modify this particular code. So you can do this in a many different way. You can use the auto implemented properties or you can just use property expressions. So we have already discussed about that in our C sharp for automation testing video course in exit automations YouTube channel. So please go ahead and watch there. So I'm just going to use this. So I'm just going to put the prop and here instead of the attribute, I'm just going to use the iWeb element and then I'm just going to use an arrow function here and we are going to use the driver object. So basically to get the driver object, all I'm going to do is this. As you know that we are initializing the driver object here from another class. I'm just going to command this particular piece of code so that it will have a better understanding. And I'm just going to create one more constructor here. And let's create a private remote web driver of underscore driver. 
and this is going to be remote web driver as well and I'm going to initialize this particular driver to this driver and there is one more shorthand expression available as you can see there is a uh, way that you can do it so if you click this particular hammer it says that change use the expression body for the constructor so if I select this you can see that it is going to change into a very very simple expression bodied member like constructor similarly you can use it for this as well so I'm just going to use the driver object as you can see I can just expand this a little bit here to give some room and you can see that this text username I have expanded to find elements by name and I can give the text username is actually username so I can keep on doing this for other options as well so maybe I can just remove this public because it can be private so this is the only change which we have to make to our existing code compared to this particular code that we have been using so long so this is now kind of deprecated and we can call this as a classical way of initializing pages via POM concept now it is completely gone so this is until selenium 3.10 and from 3.11 we should be using this concept right so it says we can change this read only there we go that's the only change and now if I try to use or run this particular code this code is going to work without any problem so let's go to the test explorer I could see that this has got the build has got succeeded and then I'm going to run the selected test there we go the browser opened and now we should log in to the application as well pretty much as expected cool so that's it so this is the only change so basically all the object initialization from the page factory is now moved out because we already have the driver object and these particular attributes and these fancy stuffs which are like too much of flawed code has been moved into much neat and much verbose way of doing it so that's it guys so these are the changes which is happening currently in selenium 3.11 so please be prepared while you start updating your existing libraries and try to modify your code to all the latest changes so that you can improve your existing code and also make sure that you are prepared for the latest changes happening in Selenium. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.